Monazite is an absolute bear to identify in thin sections. Very difficult to be uh, certain. Uh, it has high relief, it has high interference colors, you'll see that. It forms these pleochroic halos in minerals like biotite. You can also see it in chlorite, sometimes in hornblende. Um, and really, it's the shape of the crystal that suggests that it's monazite as opposed to something like zircon. Here's another example of those pleochroic halos. And what you notice about the shape is that it is a parallelogram, um, but the sides are not perpendicular to each other. So zircons tend to have much better symmetry. Monazite is monoclinic. Um, and so that particular shape with the pleochroic halo suggests that it's actually a monazite. There's a little dot on there. That's a laser ablation spot where we were collecting some uranium lead data. This is monazite in a kyanite crystal. You can see, again, high relief, much higher than the kyanite. Um, it doesn't really have much color to it. Sometimes it's a little bit tan. When I cross the polars, you'll see it has these high order, really bright um, interference colors. And I'll just say, this is about the biggest monazite crystal you'll, you'll ever see. It's like 50 or 100 microns across. That's big by monazite standards. This is monazite in a large andalusite porphyroblast, large crystal, with a bunch of little quartz inclusions as well. I noticed in these rocks that there is a little bit of red staining around the monazite crystals in the andalusite, and that might actually be radiation damage, but I've never seen that before. And then one more monazite crystal inside the andalusite. You can see that sort of reddish-brown staining, uh, maybe radiation damage. Again, this does not have a particularly good crystal form, and so that's what suggests to me that it's monazite rather than um, zircon. Titanite would definitely be browner, usually has higher interference colors also. You should probably look at the zircon and titanite videos for comparison.